I don't think it would be unreasonable for someone studying this week's Torah portion to ask the following question. Do we really need more details about the Mishkan, about the tabernacle? Hasn't God in previous portions already told us everything about it? Its dimensions, its utensils, its materials. Does he need to repeat all that now that the Jews are finally building it? Couldn't he have just said, and they built the Mishkan and continue? But this is the Torah we're talking about. So obviously we're meant to learn a lesson. Imagine, if you will, a couple on their honeymoon on a beautiful Caribbean island. And one afternoon, they decide for a few hours to do their own thing. He wants to go scuba diving, she wants to go shopping, or vice versa, so they separate. And one of them on the way runs into an old flame and decides to have a drink with that person. And one drink leads to three or four or seven, and the next thing you know, it leads to an adulterous affair. And the other spouse comes back and finds out do you think any amount of couples therapy and apologies would be able to bring that couple back to enable them to rekindle the same level of relationship with the same level of intensity that they had before? Highly improbable. The Jewish people, when they stood at the base of Mount Sinai to receive the Torah from God himself, were on a honeymoon with God. But then, 40 days later, at the sin of the golden calf, they strayed. And one would think they'd never be able to rekindle their relationship with God, to bring back that same level of intensity. But they repented sincerely, and God forgave them. So that's what God is going out of his way to show us in this week's total portion. When they build the Mishkan, he's repeating every detail to show us how enthusiastic they were, to show us how excited they were, to show us how careful they were following every iota of his command. They had regained their same level of relationship. And in fact, they got even closer. The very last passage in this week's portion, which closes out the book of Exodus, tells us that the cloud of God's glory and the fire of God stood on top of the tabernacle, on top of the Mishkan, and it was visible to every member of the Jews, man, woman, and child, which wasn't previously the case. Apparently, they had grown even closer to God. But how's that possible? after the sin of the golden calf. The Talmud tells us that in the place where the penitent, the Baal Teshuva stands, even the tzaddik, the fully righteous person, can't stand. God understands how difficult it is to get back up to repent after tasting sin. That little voice in your head, the evil inclination, the Yetzirah, will whisper to you to stay down on the floor, stay down on the mat. It's more comfortable there. For crying out loud, people will tell you to stay down on the floor. Down, down, stay down. It's your job to get back up. It's your job to fight back. Great Rocky Balboa himself understood that. He taught his own son that lesson. Nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. That's how winning is done.